One of the biggest features of the contract update in GT Online is the ability to equip what is called Imani Tech onto some of the new vehicles. More specifically, a remote control unit or a lock-on missile jammer. And in this video, I'm going to give you guys the rundown of how it all works through some in-game testing. So let's get started. First of all, I need to specify that the Imani Tech is only available on four vehicles currently out of the seven that were released on day one. And you can see the vehicles that can be fitted with the tech on this laptop on the top floor of the agency garage. You'll notice when scrolling through that there's two kind of invisible gaps in between a couple of the cars. And that's because there are actually two more vehicles that are in the drip feed that you'll be able to equip this on. Those being the Granger 3600 XL and the Patriot Mil Spec. I will be doing a video showcasing some of those drip feed cars at a later date. But for day one, you only have those four. And unfortunately, you cannot just bring in any old streetcar and apply the Imani Tech onto it. That's not how it works. It's important to note that you can only fit one of the two options on at once as well, so you have to choose between either the Missile Jammer or the Remote Control Unit. Let's begin by discussing this Remote Control Unit. It's going to set you back $235,000 to equip it to your car, after which you will be able to access it via the Interaction Menu by going down to Inventory, Remote Control Vehicles, and selecting the RC Personal Vehicle option. And with it being in the same category as your other RC cars, that is exactly how this works. You are completely off the radar and aren't physically on the map. You essentially transform into the car that you're controlling. However, unlike those other two RC cars, it is locked to a static first person view, meaning you cannot move the camera around to see your surroundings at all. While controlling your personal vehicle this way, you have access to your usual vehicle weapons like the machine guns and mines if you did equip them, but you also get a free car bomb that detonates just like you would an RC Bandito. So now instead of going off the radar to surprise someone with a car bomb, you can simply remote control a car bomb to the person to blow them up. Though you will have to pay that insurance fee. It has a 2 minute cooldown, which is really hardly anything, that 2 minutes will go by super fast. And the best case scenario where I can see this getting a good use is if a player is in god mode, you can just drive a vehicle over to them and run them over consistently to annoy them, and they can't shoot you out of it because obviously there is no driver. One funny thing you can do is if your vehicle gets impounded, no worries, you can simply just remote control it right out of the impound lot, which looks hilarious. You can also be a self-driving taxi to other players that can just hop in the passenger seats and you can drive them around freely. Normally when you despawn from the RC personal vehicle, you will respawn where you initially called it in at. However, if you want to go for a stealthy drive and get to your destination without potential attackers following you, you instead can pause your game and go to jobs and start Titan of a job while in the RC car, and you will spawn right where your car is and you can just get in and drive wherever you want to after that. This also works with the other RC cars, but this time you actually get a vehicle to hop in right when you get out of that job, so it might come in handy. As with anything that's remote control or weaponized, this can potentially be used to grief other players. That's why it's important to know the best ways to combat a remote control PV should one come after you. As you may or may not know because I have yet to do guides on these cars, the armor works differently on these vehicles depending on if they are hit with a homing missile or an RPG or any other type of explosive weapon. The homing rockets don't do nearly as much damage as the latter. One interesting thing that I also noticed while testing this, while the vehicle is in RC mode, if someone tries to lock onto you in that vehicle, they won't ever be able to get that full red lock. It just flashes between green lock and no lock. For vehicles like the Mark II and basically every other air vehicle, this won't really matter because they don't require a full lock on to target. But for something like the Charnabog that you need a full lock on in order to make the missiles follow the target, you won't ever be able to get that while trying to target an RC personal vehicle. So when it comes to countering these unmanned vehicles, you want to be hitting them with either RPGs, the grenade launcher, or sticky bombs. If one of these cars rolls up on you, your best case scenario is to try to hit him with an EMP grenade with the new compact EMP launcher. And once it does hit, you can either switch to some sticky bombs or the grenade launcher and lob four grenades their way. The car should be EMP'd all the way until just about the fourth one hits them, and that is probably going to be your best way to take them out on foot. Keep in mind you should never get really close though even when the car is EMP'd because while the car is EMP'd they can still detonate it and kill you that way. What I really don't like about these RC personal vehicles is that if you blow them up in self-defense you still have to pay for that $20,000 insurance fee on top of getting the bad sport points which I just don't think should happen and is ridiculous they should really change this. And since the vehicle is technically weaponized when it's in this form the insurance should only be costing 10 grand. But that is the remote control unit portion of this video. Now let's get into the most exciting feature added in the entire game's life cycle in my opinion, the homing missile jammer. It's going to set you back quite a bit at a $400,000 price tag per vehicle you want to put this on, but it's worth every penny, trust me. When you have this equipped, you are now permanently immune to homing missile lock. 
This feature alone breathes so much fresh air into GTA Online free mode. Oppressors, Deluxos, helicopters, jets can no longer spam homing missiles at you. And since those vehicles shoot the homing missile type and not the RPG missile type, even when they free aim, these new cars can resist a good amount of them. So if they did try to attack you, they would have a very hard time trying to kill you. And you're seeing that right now by the gameplay, I just cannot hit Ender with a free aim missile while he's moving, it's really difficult, let alone hitting over 10, which is what is required to kill him. Ever since the Doomsday Heist, GT Online has had such a bad PvP meta of just god tier tracking homing missile spam, and this lock on jammer really brings new life into the game. I want to see this taken to even further levels, you know, it's time for an unarmed plane or unarmed helicopter to have this as an upgrade to it. Or maybe even if the plane had only machine guns with no missiles as its weapons, so it could only be used to dogfight other aircraft, and if you're really good, you can maybe kill people on the ground. And same with the helicopter, just arm it with machine guns and then give it the lock-on jammer. Definitely needs to happen. And you know what? I think it will. You know, I might sound crazy when I say this, but I think this is indeed the beginning of the end of the Oppressor Mark II meta, at least in terms of PvP. But that is going to wrap up this in-depth guide. Tomorrow I will be starting covering the armored vehicles in depth with the Buffalo. So stay tuned to the channel by hitting that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like on it as well as it greatly helps it out. I want to give a massive shout out to my friend Endercrafter for helping me film and test for this video. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.